Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're talking about a new note on Tesla stock from Morgan Stanley. They have increased their price target significantly today after hours. We also have some news on the full self-driving beta, a report on Model Y gross margins from China, and some news that Rivian may be raising some more capital. Taking a look at the stock, Tesla today finished up 0.7% to $735.11. That actually did trail the Nasdaq, which was up about 1%. But here, after hours, is where things have started to get more interesting. After Morgan Stanley released their updated Tesla note, Tesla has jumped by about $10 to $15, 1.5 .5 to 2%, to right around $750 per share. Otherwise, news on Tesla was fairly light today, so we're going to spend most of our time here looking at that note. And as I always say when we look at analyst notes, a lot of this is just contextual, and it gives us good jumping off points for discussion. And things like this also give us good perspective and insight into the kind of information that's being circulated around the street. So right off the bat here, this Morgan Stanley note comes with a great headline. They title the note, quote, The Chosen One, Tesla Industrializes Internet of Cars, Target to $810, end quote. That is a huge 50% increase over their previous price target of $540 per share. They write, quote, We update our forecasts and long-term assumptions following better-than-expected Q4 deliveries, 61% year-over-year growth, and a $5 billion cap raise, raising 2030 volume to 5.2 million units versus 3.8 million, and taking the price target to $810. Tesla is richly valued for a reason. Reiterate overweight, end quote. Okay, so what has changed here with Morgan Stanley's assumptions that has led to this 50% price target increase? Well, they say they had better than expected volume this year, Q4 specifically. There's been a significant capital raise, and of course, Tesla was added to the S&P 500. So they beat Morgan Stanley's projection, they have de-risked, and they've been added to the S&P 500, which has reduced the float, effectively reducing the supply of Tesla shares. As for the actual changes to their model driving this higher price target, they say that, quote, the majority of the price target increase comes from the impact of our higher volume assumptions in our model, end quote. As I said, they have increased their 2030 delivery forecast from 3.8 million vehicles to 5.2 million vehicles, and they say that they have now added two factories to their forecast for 2030, bringing their total Tesla plant count to 10. I think that factory count is actually probably pretty close, but that would only be, you know, 580,000 vehicles per factory by 2030. But it's become very clear that Tesla actually has ambitions of producing 2 million vehicles or so per factory per year, at least in the case of Giga Texas and Giga Berlin. Shanghai, they've said 1 million plus. So even just those factories plus Fremont, if Tesla can hit their production targets in those factories, gets you to more than 5.2 million that Jonas is projecting here for 2030. As for their earlier year forecast for 2021, they have increased their projection from 778,000 previously, now to 792,000. And as a reminder, just as recently as July, they'd actually been projecting just 620,000 for 2021. So they've actually upped that by about 30% in just the last six months. For 2022, they're forecasting 1.15 million. I'm not sure what that was previously. For 2023 then, they are up from 1.35 million previously, now to 1.7 million. The fun thing about these increased volume targets from Morgan Stanley is that a few months ago they did what they called a great Tesla re-rating, and they started including things like mobility services, so recurring revenue from autonomy in their price target. So they're sort of having this ongoing aha moment this year that as they now add vehicle volume into their forecast, they now have to add additional services and revenue margin as well, and that is where the game changes in terms of the valuation for Tesla. And the thing is, you don't even need a fully autonomous robo-taxi type of service to start adding that services revenue in. When Tesla starts offering full self-driving as a subscription, I think that is going to open a lot of analyst eyes to how Tesla's business model is structured and will be increasingly structured going forward, leveraging software. It's already easy to say, as I've said in the past, that if you want to compare valuations, show me another automaker that is selling a $10,000 software option, then we can make those comparisons, but because that is all sort of right now lumped into the same revenue, the same margin line on Tesla's earnings, people just aren't willing to recognize that yet as a separate line of business. When Tesla starts offering full self-driving as a subscription, even if they don't break that out on their earnings, that forces a change in how analysts are forecasting and modeling Tesla. They have to start forecasting recurring high margin revenue. Right now, that's basically all just being pulled forward into that simple $10,000 option, which is great, but it also makes it easier to ignore. The other factor making it easier to ignore right now is that a big portion of that is still currently deferred revenue, so it's not actually showing up in earnings. But as Tesla delivers more features this year, less of that is going to be deferred. 
Tesla's valuation in and of itself is playing a role here too because it has become so massive. Analysts have to cover this. They have to cover it well. They're getting more and more resources to cover it. They're getting more and more questions. As Tesla has been added to the S&P 500, those benchmarked funds managers, they need to know what to do with this stock. So the coverage is just getting more and more intense. And again, because that valuation is high, there are going to be a lot of analysts running numbers sort of back testing against that valuation saying, okay, to justify this, this is what needs to happen for the company. That work may be a little bit eye-opening and more and more of this type of stuff is going to be included in analyst price targets. These are the important things about analyst notes. It's about the perception rather than just saying, oh, Morgan Stanley's forecasting 5.2 million vehicles for 2030, bad forecast, let's move on. It's about understanding the context and the perception, the sentiment that is out there on the street. That being said, let's round out the note here. They do have a bull case as they always do. So their bull case on Tesla is now $1,232. That would be over a $1 trillion valuation. And that assumes 8 million vehicles delivered in 2030. As for the infamous bear case, Morgan Stanley now has that set at $399 per share. You may remember this is infamous because back in mid-2019, so only 18 months ago, Morgan Stanley had a bear case on Tesla of $10 per share. $10 per share pre-split. That would be $2 per share now post-split. So they've increased their bear case by 200x in the last 18 months. Just for fun, Jonas's bull case at the time was $391 per share, post-split $78. That was the bull case. Always kind of fun to look back on some of that stuff, reflect on it, and think about where we might be 18 months from now. All right, moving on from the Morgan Stanley note, but also I think still relevant here, we have some news on the full self-driving beta. Omar over at the whole Mars catalog has taken a trip on the FSD beta with no interventions from LA to Silicon Valley. No interventions, that is, except for charging the car. So if you're not familiar with that drive, it's 350 miles, at least five to six hours. Of course, a lot of that on the highway, as any long drive would be, but very impressive nonetheless. Elon, for a number of years now, has been talking about an autonomous coast-to-coast -coast drive from LA to New York. We've continued to miss that deadline, but based on what's happening here with the full self-driving beta, it kind of looks like 2021 might finally be the year that that is feasible and potentially even completed. Anyway, Omar did record that trip, so if you do want to watch it, I'll put the link for that in the show notes. Next up here, there is a report out of China that I want to discuss on the potential gross margin for the Made in China Model Y. This is some analysis done by Gosun Securities, probably butchering the name on that, but they arrived at an estimated cost for the Made in China Model Y of about 238,000 won. If that were accurate, that would mean a 30% gross margin on the base non-performance long-range Model Y. However, I do think it's very much worth noting that this is just one firm's estimate, and they have no way of knowing how much the depreciation and amortization is. That will vary based on the production rate out of Shanghai for the Made in China Model Y. And while they may have good estimates for the cost of materials, they're never going to be exact. So things like this are always tough to put a lot of weight in. But I do think it's a reasonable estimate once Tesla does actually get that production rate up. It's not going to start off at 30%. But this is the long range version. The price is a little bit higher than what it is in the US. And even if we talk about a higher spec Model Y, if you add $5,000 in revenue and say that additional revenue from options is all going to profit, then you'd be looking at something like a 36% gross margin, which I think for an optioned out vehicle for Tesla would be pretty reasonable. Again though, that's more of a thought exercise. I personally am not going to put much, if any weight in this report. All right, lastly today we have a report from Bloomberg that Rivian is on the verge of potentially raising new funding, valuing the company at around $25 billion. I may be missing one, but I think the last raise that Rivian did was for $2.5 billion back in July. The valuation at that time was rumored to be somewhere above $8 billion with how the market has responded to other electric vehicle makers this year. Definitely no surprise to see that jump up. That's probably about where I'd expect it to be, so in reality it'd probably be a little bit higher if it were trading on the public markets today. But of course, it's still very early for them. They are pre-revenue, but they are targeting to deliver their first R1T all-electric trucks in June this year. This upcoming raise is rumored to be several billion dollars, so certainly they've got the capital there to make a go of it. All right, that is it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, June 6th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.